Good evening, I'm John Kimbell. Did you hear that? I'm John Kimbell. <laughs> I'm what's left of John Kimbell, but I'm here to talk to you tonight about reconciliation. You all know about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the future of indigenous people in this country. Well, imagine my surprise when a former premier asked me to join the Canadians for a new partnership, a new organization to champion reconciliation between Canadians and indigenous peoples. I thought, great. There were two former prime ministers, a retired Supreme Court judge, the former Auditor General, and several former national indigenous leaders. Hope was in the air. With such an assembly of political celebrities, I thought, wow, something really great is going to happen. We didn't have any money, but that didn't matter. We had famous politicians. I thought we would advocate for something transformative. We talked and talked and talked for three years. Then it dawned on me, nobody had any ideas. It was these same people that didn't do much of anything to advance reconciliation when they were in power. Then suddenly, a middle of the road decision was made. We would embrace one of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission recommendations to advocate for each province to add more indigenous history into public schools. Mind you, the provinces already had some indigenous history curriculum, but hey, we wanted more and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission recommended it. Then we were asked to raise $5 million so we could call each premier and ask them to add more indigenous history. Unfortunately, no one could raise $5 million because the corporations we asked told us, you don't need $5 million to call the premiers. <laughs> Go figure. Turns out some of the premiers were already way ahead of us anyways and had already decided to enhance the indigenous curriculum on their own. I was frustrated. I then asked myself, what is real reconciliation? I thought of the crime of residential schools, children stolen from their families, being raped and murdered. And what about the parents who suffered losing their children in such a violent way? I thought of how courts award the injured party. Then it dawned on me, the money should be focused on the injured party. Instead of funding the white kids in their schools, the money should go to improving First Nation schools and curriculum, providing bre breakfast and lunch programs and extracurricular activities. If the native kids were the victims, why are the nice white kids getting the money? Something's wrong here. Then I thought of the murdered and missing indigenous women, rampant youth suicide, the 60s scoop, poverty, lack of housing and clean water. All possible because an evil law the Indian Act allows this to happen. So I thought we have to change the fundamental relationship so the government can no longer do these things to us. If they can't do it to you, they shouldn't be able to do it to us. And that change is to amend or repeal the Indian Act, an act of apartheid, a crime against humanity where white people legislated themselves as better and indigenous peoples as lesser, to be subjugated, impoverished, absolutely suppressed, and marginalized by law. A policy that in today's Western world wouldn't be tolerated. Imagine a Department of Jewish or Muslim Affairs in today's Canada. Canada, a little peaceful country, a bastion of liberal democracy, a beacon of freedom and tolerance in the world, except it embraces the policy of apartheid for its own original people. Even South Africa abandoned and repealed apartheid. Isn't this law, the Indian Act, with a single purpose to control, impoverish, to treat us as children and third-rate citizens to the extent where they can take our children away, isn't this the fundamental problem? The Prime Minister responded, no, John Kim, we should stick to asking the premiers to add indigenous curriculum so the white kids will grow up and not persecute native people anymore. We must first change attitudes if anything is ever to change. <clears throat> but he told me the same thing 30 years ago. Well, okay, I thought. Maybe I should modify my position. What about then simply providing new opportunities, equal access? In 1988, I produced the first ever $1 million indigenous ballet in the Land of Spirits with indigenous dancers and artists. My thesis was, if given the opportunity, we could equal anything the mainstream could do. Everyone thought it would be a colossal failure. Instead, it was a colossal success. 
perhaps the greatest cultural breakthrough of our community. Everyone attended, the Prime Minister, Governor General, and half the Federal Cabinet. Thousands of Canadians and Indigenous people attended as well. So imagine my surprise last year when the Truth and Reconciliation Commission decided to sponsor the pasty white Royal Winnipeg Ballet to produce a, a ballet about residential schools. Oh, they had some very talented Asian dancers for sure, portraying First Nations people, along with the Caucasian composer and choreographer. Yes, there were some real Native people involved tangentially, but who benefited the most from the employment and opportunity? The company stated that they were committed to our community and were going to establish a scholarship fund for Indigenous youth. That was two years ago. I recently wrote to them to see if they had honored this promise, especially given that they had received reconciliation funds that should have gone to our community, but they still haven't established the fund. Funding directed to the nice white kids to learn more about us and funding the Royal Winnipeg Ball Ballet are but two examples of how society is embracing reconciliation. Provide the money, the benefit, and the opportunity to anyone but Indigenous people. You know, the injured party. This is a different type of reconciliation. I call it reconciliation. W-R-E-C-K, reconciliation. Anyways, I resign from the Canadians for a new partnership. But there is hope. Every day in the media, I see that amending or repealing the Indian Act is being discussed more and more. Heck, even the Department of Indian Affairs is talking about it, even our Prime Minister. They just split the department in two to get ready for it, so I don't think I'm so crazy after all. Fixing the fundamental relationship is the answer. It seems obvious to me and many others. Unfortunately, embracing this idea means you are labeled a disruptor. Perhaps next year, the Royal Winnipeg Ballet will fund an Indigenous ballet produced and performed by real Indigenous people. I can't wait for that scholarship fund to start helping our young, talented Indigenous people to represent and express themselves and benefit from having new and real opportunities. Until then, do what the French did. Do what the Americans did. Do what the South Africans did. Disrupt. Revolt. Fight back. Thank you.